Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Microsoft Cloud CAF series I'm doing. You know, I've been going through for a number of weeks now the different sort of um, areas of CAF, Cloud Adoption Framework, how you, you know, organizations can, can facilitate this, the planning, you know, and, I've, and I've, I've kind of focused on governance and security. Now, um, Obviously, in the last episode, um, or if we take a step further back in that, the, if you remember the, the session I did with Chris Hales, we kind of talked about this, this product called Cloud Clarity. Now, since then, I kind of looked further into it. I did a kind of uh, an episode about it in, in the last episode. I did a bit of a deep dive into it. I installed it. I'm lucky enough today to be joined by the, the head developer for Cloud Clarity. Um, so it's my honor to introduce to the channel for the first time, John Daoud. Welcome, John. Hey Shabazz. How how are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Good. good mate. Um, how are thank you Thank you so much. Yeah, good, 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 mate. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining me. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a friend of mine that put me on to, to Cloud Clarity, and I kind of looked into it a bit more, had to play around with it, and now I've kind of got I've got the the trial version installed on my tenant, but. What I really wanted was someone with a lot more depth of knowledge just to do a little demo for us because I think that would be a lot better than me blindly stabbing my way through, <laughs> through it, if I'm honest, until I properly learn the product with a bit more depth. So you're going to do a demo for us. But before that, can you just introduce yourself to those viewers who might not know who you are? Yep. Yeah, sure. I'm John. I'm the head developer at um, Cloud Clarity. I've been working on the product for a couple of years now. and I'm here to give you a demo. Excellent. Um, so let's let's jump into it then. Do you want to do you want to show us what you've got in store for us today? Sure. Let me just share my screen. So we've jumped into Cloud Clarity now, and this is sort of the home page that you'll run into. Um, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create an environment, um, and an environment is essentially it's a way to filter your resources to the ones that you actually want to work with. Um, so let's jump into it. You hit the plus icon. Um, and we'll just give it a name, call it demo. Uh, and then the first thing we'll do is that we'll select a list of subscriptions uh, that we want to include. So I'll just select a bunch of subscriptions. Okay, and then on top of that, optionally, you can also choose uh, to enter some tag filters. Um, an example of a useful tag filter might be the owner tag key with, the, with yourself as the value, and that way you can filter down the resources just to those that are important to you. Uh, but for now, let's just leave that empty and hit Create. And then I'll select that environment. Um, next, let's jump into Tag Health. And Tag Health is a feature that helps you keep track of how well your environment is tagged. And um, with the tags that are important to you, you can also make distinctions between tag sets that are relevant only to yourself and tag sets that are relevant to your entire organization. Um, the goal with Tag Health is to get your score as close to 100 as possible and then maintain that score. So we'll go ahead and create a rule set. Let's call it demo rule set. Um, and the first thing you see is the sharing toggle. So again, if you enable this, then anyone under your tenant can also see this rule set. So I'll just go ahead and enable that. Um, and then for the rules, uh, this is where we'll start entering our tag key rules. So I would like to enter the owner tag key and then go to advanced settings, uncheck include all tag values, and then enter the tag values that I want in this environment. And these are the only ones that will count towards a passing score for tag health. And then, so, so John, just quickly, quick question: If you were to not untick that box there, would it basically what would be the outcome? What would it show you? So, 
So we'll do that for the next tag key. So for the application tag key, I will leave that as is. And what that means is that any tag value is acceptable. So any tag value will pass for the tag health check. Okay, I got you. Cool. And then we'll go ahead and hit create and select that rule set. And immediately we can see we get a 20% score, so it's pretty bad in here. Um, you can see we scanned 201 resources. There's the resources in our demo environment, and we checked two rules. Um, so so what, what this is telling us now is the, the resources that have the owner of Shabazz and John tagged as the owner um, tag, but also any applications, uh, tags that are being used, no matter who, what the value is, right? Yeah. Yes, correct. Right, okay. Uh, and, and we can see that detail here. So we have the owner tag key, 14% um, um, are passing our rule set, which is those, there are 30 resources. Um, if we click into that, we can actually see, there we go. So there's 30 resources tagged with John. Um, and if we click again, we can see those actual resources. So just going back now. Oh, I like that. So you can actually dig down and see like specific resources with that setting, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and going back, so there's actually a toggle over here. So it's showing matching. If we switch that over, so now it's also going to show um, what's not matching. So we can see tag value empty. So we have 34 resources that are empty or untagged with the owner tag. And then we have 137 resources um, tagged with John2, which doesn't pass the rule. Okay, uh, we can do the same thing with the application tag again. Uh, yeah, so we have a few different values. And then there's a lot of empty values. Uh, okay. Going back, um, so now we want to go ahead and fix this. So let's switch over and jump to Tag Manager. Um, so pretty much this is where you can do all your tagging from simple and small changes to larger environment-wide CSV imports. Uh, we have the Tag Manager table view to start off with. So this is just a flattened list of resources in our selected environment with their resource group and subscription IDs. Uh, to start working with tags, we can just go over to our tag dropdown and start selecting them. Or we can just hit add tag and enter whatever tag, tag key we want. Um, okay, so just to give you a quick example, we can do tagging directly in the tool here. So if we wanna make small changes, we can go ahead and just do that here um, and then hit save. Uh, that might take a couple of minutes. You can see that that is done now. We can go ahead and click view result. And yep, we can see all our tag updates are successful. We'll close that. And we can see that those values are now reflected here. Um, that's... So those are one-off changes, right? So how about like bulk changes? And that'd be quite cool. Yeah, so we'll jump into that now. So first thing we want to do is hit export CSV. And again, that might take a minute to generate. Okay, that's done. So now let's, let me just switch my screen. All right, now I'll just go ahead and start editing that CSV. Hit import. And from here, it's very easy to start editing. So for application, I want to set everything to Cloud Clarity. And then for owner, I want to set half of those, or about half, to John. And then let's set the rest of those to Shabazz. Uh, 
And this is this is a lot of changes I'm making here. We're changing a lot of tags here. So we're actually making yeah, yeah. a change to all 200 tags here. So this would be interesting to see how how quickly this shows. Yep, so uh, again, I've downloaded that CSV now. I'm just going to switch back to Cloud Clarity. Uh, hit Import and... Done there. So that's going to start importing now. It will probably take a few minutes. Okay, so that's just completed. Again, let's view result. Nice, they were all successful. Um, so we can just close that. And we can see that's reflected now. So well, these are all tagged. With card clarity so that's and like, sorry, John. That's like live updates, right? Because there was a couple. Yeah, obviously, yeah. the import took the import took a couple of minutes, which you could people can see in the before. The, so that you know, we're not putting all over people's eyes there. That import finished, and we then just you just went straight in and it was done. Because a lot of time, I feel with especially when you're dealing with third party apps. This is a third party tool, right? It takes time sometimes for the Azure portal to update, but with this, we're seeing the changes literally within seconds of it been made. I mean, that's really, really cool. Yeah, exactly. And once it shows here, it, it will show in Azure as well. So, uh, let's head back to Tag Health real quick. Okay, so, and wow, look at that. From 20% to 99, that's mad. There we go. So, it looks like there's one resource that maybe isn't actually taggable, so we might have to look into that later. But, yeah, we've got up to a 99% score now. Excellent. There okay, you go. That's very and, powerful. Okay, so next, let's jump into tag history. So, tag history basically records all the tag changes made when using Cloud Clarity. Um, so, it'll show you a list of resources that were updated with their before and afters with um, for their tag values. It also enables you to revert those changes. So, that can be especially useful when, when making like massive imports like we just did then. Uh, if there were issues, you can just go ahead and revert that. So let's select our tag history. Uh, and then, so you, you view it um, based on each tag key that was changed. So let's look at the owner tag key. And there we go. So we have a list of our resources. Um, okay, so, so so a use case here, John, is say you've done a mass import, right? But for example, maybe two or three of those were incorrectly set. Rather than rerunning, doing the import, export, blah, blah, again, you just come into tag history and, and change those three or four specific ones that were, you can revert those specific ones. Is that right? Or would you just have to go back in and change it manually? So so you could revert the entire uh, the entire update that was made. Right, but say there was only five that were maybe incorrectly input. I'd just go on into Tag Manager and manually update those, right, rather than redoing the import. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. would probably just update the five. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we can see. So all most of these were empty beforehand. We had a couple of values, and then we switched them over to these tag values here. Uh, pretty simple. Um, and finally, let's jump into our, we've called it automations, but basically it's a, a collection of easy to use tools that help cover some common use cases. So we have the tag replacer, the tag key deleter and the empty tag deleter. So let's just uh, go ahead and show you the tag replacer. Um, and pretty much this will change all instances of a tag key value with another value, if that makes sense. So for example, we'll use the owner tag key and sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to remove you from oh this my, environment. My own channel, I'm being removed, but that's, that's <laughs> disrespectful. Sorry, mate. Um, and then I'll just replace those all with John two. And we'll hit replace. Again, this will probably take a minute or two. Okay, so that's completed. Uh, it was successful. Uh, so we can see now quickly if we jump into tag health, it should look bad again. Yep, it's gone down. So the owner tag is only at 47% now. So.
Yeah, we can see we tagged 105 resources with John 2-0. Um, so jumping back into automations. Uh, so I just, I like how, so with that, okay, obviously you, you've got multiple people in, in different parts of the business that might be, you know, tagging their resources, etc. But as, a, as an organization, you can have like regular reviews of your tagging to see that, you know, basically looking at your governance health, right? And see, okay, how was our governance health? And if you see those changes or fluctuations in your tag health, you can say, right, we need to look into this a bit further. And you can get somebody, you know, one of your team to actually look in what's changed and why is your governance level going down? I mean, that's really interesting. Yeah, 100%. Um, so jumping into the tag key deleter, uh, it's pretty simple. You just select the tag key and it completely removes, completely removes it from all the resources in this environment. Uh, so we could select anything. I think we don't, we can probably just skip over that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then we have the empty tag deleter, which is sort of a cleanup tool. Um, you don't even have to select a tag key. It's just going to delete any tag keys that have an empty value. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it for the demo, I guess. Excellent. So yeah, yeah obviously you've done a much better job than I could have done there, John. So thank you very much for that. Um, no worries. Really, really appreciate you going through that. So I think that that's really clear to see how. So I, I do a lot of work, John, with with organisations that are either they've either tried to adopt cloud and they've just moved too fast. They've gone for like lift and shift. And they've, they, they've jumped over sort of the governance area of it, right? They've, they've just not focused on that. So naming conventions and tagging are just, just non-existent. And it's some, I, I see a lot of organizations struggle with it, but what I feel this tool is doing is just making it so much easier, right? As long as you've, you've kind of, you understand what values and what, what tags you want to create, this is going to make it so much quicker for you to do it on scale, you know, at scale easy, but also make sure and again what happens is when say they do go into cloud and they, they do some governance to start with they just don't maintain it and that's that's another area where i think you know cloud clarity can can be a benefit because it's it's allowing people to have that ongoing governance and the health check stuff is really cool um is that how you're finding with customers are they are they using it in those sort of use cases yeah. no yeah 100 percent. i think you nailed it that's pretty much pretty much what the idea was with the cloud clarity mm. Well, yeah, I mean, for me, when I, when I look at it from a, from, a, from, from a point of view of the industry and the conversations I have, this is where I would, I would see it fitting. Um, so no, that's great. Um, so thank you very much again, John. I appreciate your time. Um, what I'll do is for everyone who's watching, I'll, I'll stick some information around Cloud Clarity in the description. Also, um, I'll put, some, put a link into John's um, LinkedIn. Um, but I'm, uh, the next episode, I'm going to be joined by. So, I'm going to kind of go full circle with this. I've done a bit, I know, you know, a bit of an intro to it. We've done a bit of a technical demo, but I'm also going to have in the next episode the CEO um, or CTO, sorry, of of Cloud Clarity, um, Sylvan Maida. Am I pronouncing that right, John? Maida. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I'll have Sylvan on anyway, and he's going to go on a, into a bit more of a history around it and the thought process. What was the idea? How you know? How did he come up with it? We'll get some information around that as well. Um, for those watching, you probably noticed I'm watching my IMIT 50k subscriber giveaway um, with the Nerdio branding. I'm going to do a, a, an online giveaway of this. I did a giveaway on my, on my YouTube live, but only one person won. So I'm going to do a competition, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, so John, massive thank you again for joining me. Much appreciate your time. Uh, and until next time, everybody, thank you and goodbye.